Well, good morning, House of Grace, and good morning to everyone who's watching us all over the world. We are in House of Grace Church this morning. It's, uh, it's going to be a good day. I, I've got a lot to share with you in a short amount of time. I believe you're going to find this encouraging and challenging. Obviously, we are recording this from the church without an audience uh, because of the current crisis our nation and that our world is in. But I came to bring you good news this morning. So I hope that you're watching with your family uh, or by yourself. But if you will, maybe go ahead. If you're watching on Facebook, click uh, share, share this to your page, start a watch party with your friends. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, then welcome uh, or whatever platform you might be joining us. Just welcome to House of Grace Church, but welcome to the worldwide church. You know, there might be a lot of labels and a lot of church names, but the truth is everybody who loves Jesus is part of the same church. We are the church. Last week, I preached a message called The Church Has Left the Building. But you know, the truth is the church never was a building. You are the church. I am the church. We are the church. This morning, uh, I felt like the Lord really wanted to recognize that a lot of people are hurting. Um, some of you may have loved ones uh, that have been affected by the virus. I know even here in our region, a couple of uh, beloved uh, gentlemen uh, have been struggling and, and we lost one gentleman in Warner Robins just this week and another brother in Hawkinsville is struggling and we are praying blessings and life for him. Uh, but you may not be struggling with sickness, but you might be hurting or affected economically. Uh, some of you watching and even in our church family, you, you haven't had as much work or maybe you've been already laid off. Or maybe you're just dealing with some anxiety and even depression. There's been a lot of that going around, and that's, that's uh, common in times like this when we're in a different situation, and there's lots of unknowns. Uh, but I just want you to know that God is still good and that God is on the throne. And I'm going to share some information with you today from His Word that I believe will comfort you and challenge you as well. Uh, but most of all, I want you to know that God's going to take care of you. God's got your back. You're in his hands. You're in good hands. So uh, be encouraged this morning. And uh, I want to start reading to you out of Genesis chapter 41, verses 25 through 45. And I'll tell you what I'll do. That's a lot of verses, and, and we're not going to have it on the screen. So I'm going to paraphrase a lot of this for you. And what it is... There's this guy named Joseph, and Joseph is, is a man of God. He's God's man, but I tell you what, maybe you can relate to Joseph because he, he started out knowing that God had big plans for his life, but then it all seemed to go downhill after that. Joseph found himself being disliked and hated on by others, and they sold him. His own brothers sold him into slavery, and then he was framed by a woman of a crime he did not commit. He ended up in prison, and eventually he found himself before the Pharaoh. He's in a, a foreign land, the country of Egypt. He's a, he's a little Jewish boy, and he found himself in front of the Pharaoh, who is basically running the entire known world. And the Pharaoh had had a dream, a crazy dream, and he needed an interpretation. He knew the dream meant something, but he didn't know what it meant. And somebody said, there's a guy named Joseph that he might can tell you what's happening here. He may can and interpret your dream. So that's what happened. Joseph came before him, and this is in Genesis 41. And Joseph said, you know what? God interprets dreams, and dreams belong to the Lord. Let me share with you what the Lord is saying. Remember, this is the ruler of Egypt, the Pharaoh, the known uh, world. And he said, Pharaoh, there's going to be a time of great prosperity in your nation. He said, but after that, there's going to come a time of famine. There's going to come a time of great famine. And it's going to be bad. There's bad times coming to the world, Pharaoh. And God is trying to let you know in advance. And Pharaoh said, oh my goodness, this, this is definitely making sense. What you're saying correlates with a dream. What should we do? 
And Joseph said, well, you need to find a guy and uh, you need to get somebody in charge and you need to actually have a strategy and use the years of prosperity to prepare for the years of famine. And if you, if you actually handle this correctly, you'll come out ahead on the other side of this famine. And Pharaoh said, you know what? How about you be the guy, Joseph? And uh, Joseph said, sounds like a great idea to me. (laughs) It was a lot better than prison. And so Joseph found himself, one day he's a prisoner in the dungeon. The next day, Pharaoh said, you're the number two guy. You're like the vice president of Egypt. And whatever you say goes, I want you to head up the strategy of of this catastrophe, of this crisis that's coming. So, uh, you know, like in our current day, just like uh, Vice President Mike Pence is heading up this task force. Uh, under the current administration for the coronavirus, Joseph found himself being the VP in charge of the task force. And they were in this time of prosperity, but the famine was coming. Joseph's life was turned around at that moment. Uh, but I want you to see some, some, uh, some things out of this, some nuggets out of this story that will have something to do with us today. So let me give you a few nuggets. And that's all in Genesis chapter 41. If you're just joining us, We're talking about what God has to say about our current situation. Many of us are hurting. Many of us are going through some some anxiety, some fear, even some financial challenges. And is God aware? Does He care? That's what we're talking about this morning. What's the deal? So number one nugget I wrote down for you. There was a famine coming, but it was not a surprise to God. Did you know that's the same way with our crisis, this worldwide pandemic? God was not surprised when this came about. God wasn't going, oh, I didn't see this coming. No, God knew it was coming. You can find comfort in knowing that the God we serve knows everything that's coming. But it gets even better. So we know that God is never, never surprised by crisis. You and I, I was surprised. Were you surprised? I, I feel you shaking your head on the other side of your phone, on the other side of your TV. We, we were surprised. And some of you said, well, I, 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 some people said, I, I felt like something was coming, but now we know what it was. But God was not surprised. Now listen, here's, here's where I want you to see. God used Joseph to set aside a supply if, you, if in your house, just say supply. You got to amen with me this morning. You can type it in. Uh, you can shout it in your house, but say supply. See, God has a supply for the problem. In fact, type in Joseph because this whole message today, I would title it, God always has a Joseph. God always has a Joseph. And, and so even though there are situations that come that are crises, God always has a Joseph that he'll put in a place. Now, it's not going to always be a particular person, but I, in, in, in a larger sense, Jesus is our Joseph. You know what I'm saying? But no matter what comes your way, no matter what problems and crisis you face, because guess what? This won't be your last crisis. Did you hear me? This, this won't be your last crisis. So you need to understand that God has gone before you and placed a Joseph inside of your Egypt. He's already aware of the famine. And I want to point you out to verse 52. I want to read this one. So after Joseph began to work the problem, he he headed up the task force. He, He had a wife now. He had a son. And his second son, he named him something special in verse 52 of Genesis 41 it says and the name of the second son he called Ephraim and you can pronounce that different ways but I looked it up that's the best I've got this morning Ephraim and that means he said for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction I want to read it again God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of of my affliction. God's people will be fruitful even in a famine. We're in a famine. We're in a crisis. We're in a hard time. But God's people are called to be and raised up to be and provided to be and promised to be fruitful in the famine. God's desire for you during this crisis. This isn't some some, uh, foundationless 
prosperity gospel that's based on nothing. This is a provision truth that God provides for his people even during the famine. Come on, you should be saying amen in your house, on your phone, in your car, at work, wherever you are. That's good news. So I heard one pastor say it this way. I wrote it down. He said, God will not allow a problem to enter your life unless, I didn't say he wouldn't allow a problem. I said, unless he has already given you a promise and a provision. Let me read it again. God will not allow a problem to enter your life unless he has already given you a promise and a provision. Come on, somebody. God's got a Joseph. He's already taken care of this thing for you. So I want to look at those two for just a few moments today. Today is not going to be a super long message, but I want to talk about promises. So anytime a problem comes into your life, God has attached to it and sent before it promises and provision. And if you think about it, it makes sense because if God allowed problems to come into your life that he hadn't given you a promise for, that he hasn't already provided provision for, that it would not bring glory to his name. It would not look good. It would not show who God is if he allowed his children to face things that he had not taken care of for them because he knows the problem is bigger than us. Oh, that's good. The problem is bigger than you can handle. It's okay to say to God, I can't handle this problem. It's too big. He knows. He knows. Yeah. But he's already sent a Joseph. He's already got promises and provisions. So a few promises that came to my mind. You you need to find your promises in the Word of God. A word from God is your promise for your problem. So I thought about what are a few promises you might want to grab onto. The first one that came to my mind was Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. Probably one of the first verses I ever memorized as a child. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. That may be a familiar verse to you. It may be the first time you've heard it. That's Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. I take that as a promise that if I will trust the Lord with everything I have and not try to figure it out, not depend on my own self, not depend on the government, come on somebody, not depend on a politician, not depend on even the doctors. They're all wonderful. Thank you, God, for the scientists. Thank you for our leaders. But Lord, we're looking to you. We're looking to you. And you gave us promises that we can trust you. In Matthew 6, 33, Jesus had been talking about not worrying about how things are going to work out in our life and how are we going to have the provisions that we need. And Jesus said, God already knows everything you need. He knows everything. He said in Matthew 6, 33, he said, if you will seek him first and his righteousness, your relationship with him, We're going to have to put our relationship with God as a priority. If you're like me, I found myself this last couple weeks just being discombobulated, disoriented, kind of like, well, how do I do do life in this new schedule? How do I find a rhythm? And and I've I've lost some of my structure. And this, this week, the Lord spoke to me. He said, Joy, you're going to have to get your stuff together. Yeah, you're going to have to get it together. Because this season may last a little while. We might be in this famine for a few months. We might be in here longer. We're already in it longer than we wanted to be. But we cannot lose sight of who God is, what he's called us to be, and what he's called us to do. We we, we will will have some challenges, but I'm telling you, God's going to show himself faithful. It's time that we, we pull ourselves together and say, God is still God. Amen? Type in amen. Come on. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you, the Lord says. That job was never your source. That job was never your source. Oh, yeah, I need to get closer. That job was never your source. That's just a a stream that I use. But God is your source. God is your source. Amen. 
promises. We're talking about promises that God gives us for the problem. Romans 8, 28 says, All things work to the good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Is that you? Do you love God? Are you called according to His purpose? If you're a follower of Jesus, you can say, yep, that's me. Then God says, even the crazy, even the crisis, I'll work it out to your good. I didn't send it, but I'll use it to get my glory and to grow you into a more Christ-like character. Come on, guys, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Got to get our minds right. And the last promise I want to give you comes from Romans 8, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers and height nor debt, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You, you need to understand the love of God is not just a ushy gushy feeling. See, this isn't just a, oh, thank you. I, I, thank you for that love, even though it's gonna be really hard. No, the love of God it contains the promise of God. It contains the presence of God, which gives the power of God. The love of God is what you need through the crisis. It isn't just your peace, it's the power. I hope you're hearing this. The love of God is bigger than we thought. So when there's a problem that enters our life, God has given us a promise or more than one promise, and he's given us provision Provision. Would you just type in provision? I want to talk to you about that word, provision. Provision. God is a provider. And I looked up that word, provision. It comes from the Latin. It means from provisio, which means to foresee. Foresee. I would type in the word before. T type it in. Say it out loud. Before. Before before provision God before the problem got here God sent provision pro means before what you see or what you're going to see before you're in the vision whether it's a good thing or a famine God has already provided he's in the provision business what I'm trying to get you to see is that before the famine ever happened God already had Joseph in place there were supplies set aside for the famine for God's people I'm telling you it's the same for you God loves you and if you're in covenant you're a follower of Jesus whatever the problem has come God has already given you a promise and he's given you a provision he's sent it beforehand Beforehand, This is a pattern that we see in Scripture. Before you can even see the problem, God has sent the provision. Before you experience the attack, God has provided the rescue. Think about it in the Bible. Before there was a flood, God provided an ark. Before there was slavery in Egypt, God had promised a Moses. Before Adam and Eve sinned and death entered into the world, God had already planned to send Jesus, his son, as the sacrifice to save us. Before the problem ever gets here, God's already seen it and he's provided what you need. Are you seeing this? You can trust him. You can trust him. God is trustworthy. He knew this was coming, and He's already provided everything that you need. Everything that you need. Everything that you need. The name Joseph, I'm kind of partial to it. <laughs> my, my name is Joseph, and uh, Joseph is a Hebrew name, and it means God will increase. Oh, come on, God will increase. Think about that in the context of the famine that was worldwide at that time. And it seemed like everything was decreasing, 
But God was saying, I'm going to place the increase already there ahead of time so that when things seem to decrease, by the time this is all over, you will see that God has brought increase. He will add an increase. But Joseph did go through some hard times. See, a lot of times we think that if we're a Joseph, then everything's going to go right because we've got this favor of God on our lives. But let me tell you, favor, favor is tough. Favor brings persecution. Favor brings temptations. Favor brings trials because the enemy recognizes the favor on your life. He recognizes the favor on our nation. He recognizes the favor of the Lord that's being poured out on the earth. You may not realize it, but there are revivals happening across the globe over the last decade or so. And people are being saved. Thousands of people are coming to Christ every day across the world. There is a favor on the earth, but it's being met with challenge. So I want you to to be a Joseph. Yeah, yeah. See, this isn't just about you getting what you need. During this time of crisis, God isn't just saying he's going to take care of you. He wants to let you be a part of the plan. See, you're a part of the provision. You're a part of some of you. God's going to use you in ways you've never been used before to provide and take care of others. In fact, that's what I'm asking you to do this morning is just decide to be a Joseph inside of the famine. You, you may be saying, I, I, I don't have any money. Or you may be saying, well, I got money, but I hadn't planned to do that. Well, if God's giving you the financial provision, then it, maybe it's not just all for you. Maybe it's not just to be stored up. Maybe what you have, God's going to ask you to use it to take care of your brothers and sisters, to bless your community, to meet needs. Did you know he loves a cheerful giver and your generosity will not be overlooked? But you may say, well, I don't have any money. I got laid off. But what, what do you have? Maybe you have more time now. And you may be saying, well, yeah, but I can't even leave the house. But what can you do? Can you make a phone call? Could you call somebody? Could you encourage someone? Could you decide that you're going to be in the ministry, that you're going to encourage your brothers and sisters, that you're going to share the gospel on social media, that you're going to do the, the three-minute testimony challenge? I saw so many of you doing that this week. It's amazing to hear your stories. Thank you. Thank you. Share your three-minute testimony online. Just do a video on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Tell people your Jesus story. Just say, this was one part of my life that was empty before Christ. This is how and when I came to Christ. And this is one difference that's made in my life. People are looking for hope. And you are a hope dealer. Be a Joseph. Share your peace. Share your prayers. Share a word. I've heard so many people say that this is something the Lord showed me during this time because I had to slow down, right? Right? We've all had to slow down a little bit. But God has shown me things about my family. He's shown me things about my priorities. He's shown me things about my character. He's shown me things about his character. What is God showing you? You could share that with someone and you would be a Joseph. But I want to show you this verse, and I'm winding down here. In Genesis chapter 50, okay, everything, everything is winding down in Joseph's story. And he's provided for his brothers. They actually, the people who did him wrong, that's a whole other message. The people who did him wrong, he actually became the source and the blessing for them during their famine. Oh, what a testimony. What a testimony if you were able to bless someone who hasn't treated you right, but you reached out to them during this crisis and loved on them. What could Jesus do with that? But in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, Time goes on and his brothers are freaking out because daddy has died and they're worried, okay, Joseph is going to get his revenge on us now. He's going to drop the hammer. He's going to give us what we deserve. And I love this passage in Genesis chapter 20, verse, uh, 50 rather, Genesis 50, verse 20. Joseph said this, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for what? If you know the passage, you're saying good. God meant it for what? Good. 
in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. See, God is going to take this situation that was meant for evil, sickness, disease, viruses. They're not from heaven. They're not from the Lord. They're from the enemy. They're from death in this broken world. And they mean to damage. They mean to destroy. But God is saying, I'm going to take what was meant for evil and I'm going to turn it to good. I'm going to use it for good. And I'm going to use you for good. When this is all said and done, we're on the other side of this crisis. We'll see that God used it to bring people to himself. But here's here's it. Here's the big deal. If you haven't heard anything, hear this last Bible verse. In the very next verse, I know that Joseph was talking to his brothers, but I believe that God would use this verse to speak to you today. Listen, listen, listen. Now, therefore... Do not be afraid. I will provide for you and for your children. Did you hear that? The Lord is saying that to you today, guys. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and for your children. God is going to provide for you He is going to take care of you. He's got you. God was not surprised. We are not alone. We have each other. We have our church family. We have God as our Father. He is not surprised by this crisis. He's never been surprised. God can't be surprised. Listen, God is not having a hard time managing this. I know as a nation and as the world, We're having a hard time managing this. We're meeting together and we're having special meetings and we've got people working around the clock. But guess what? In heaven, there is no special meeting being called. God is on the throne. He hasn't gotten up for this. He's already seen the problem coming. He sent a promise and he sent a provision. What will we do? What will we do, church? We will continue to stand on God's promises and we will expect to see His provision. Say it again. We will stand on God's promises. What has He promised you? Find something in the Word to stand on through this time. Share it with your friends. Share it with your children. Say, God has given us a promise. He's never lied and He's never not been faithful. He's given us a promise, and we expect to see His provision. Thank you, Lord, for your promise and your provision that's already been placed in our tomorrow. You're already working out tomorrow. You've taken care of it before we even step into it. Let me pray for you, and then you can discuss this message with your friends and family. You can share it again on Facebook. Let's get the word out that God always has. A Joseph. Let me pray for you. Father, you know a lot of us are hurting. You know who is facing financial challenges. You know who's been laid off. You know who's scared. You know who feels alone. You know where we are. You never leave us and you never forsake us. Lord, would you show yourself strong on our behalf? Would you remind us that you are the rescuer? You are the redeemer. You are the great and mighty one. We love you. We praise you, God. I pray that we would be a Joseph, that we would help others, that we would look for needs to meet. And those of us that have needs, help us to be courageous to share our needs with one another so that we can take care, share it with the church leadership. We want to take care of each other. Lord, help us to do that. Help us to take care of one another. Help us to seek you first in your kingdom. And to realize that there's never been a problem that you didn't give us your promises and your provision because you always have a Joseph. Bless your holy name. Amen. If you're watching this and you have not yet surrendered your heart to Jesus, do it right now. Do it right now. 
because you'll never experience the peace of God, the promise of God, and the provision of God until you're a child of God. Say, Jesus, I know that you're God. I don't understand everything, but I know in my heart this is true. Would you come and be my God? I need to be saved from myself. I need to be saved from my sin. I believe that you're the Son of God. You died on the cross. You rose from the, third, uh, you rose from the grave on the third day. I don't understand all that, but I know in my heart that it's true. Come be my God. I want to spend the rest of my life getting to know you, following you, obeying you, because you're good. If you prayed that, send me a message and let me know. We're going to help you on your journey. Your best days are ahead. God bless you. Well, that's all we have for you this week, folks. I hope you have been blessed. And remember, stay healthy and stay connected this week. Remember, we have our Wednesday online service that's going to be airing on houseofgrace.life and our YouTube channel. But... Pay special attention as you stay connected this week on House of Grace Not Life, on our YouTube channel, and on Pastor Joey's Facebook page for special pop-ins, small teachings throughout the week. Until then, we love you and see you next week.